All right, my code's done. Time to ship it. Delivery free, box to you, dog water, zero earns, zero PR. In the age of AI, debugging and getting into software engineering has never been easier. Here are the exact six steps you need to take to unblock yourself from any software engineering error you'll ever get. Number one, tinker. Try to pinpoint your error. You can usually use an AI buddy to help you out here. Pinpointing your error will potentially solve your problem before you even go into an AI and allow you to craft a better question to an AI. Once you've pinpointed the issue, you can move to step two, which is ask your AI. You can use ChatGPT, Find, Bing's AI, or if you want to get wrong answers, Google's Bard. There are six principles to prompt engineering so that you can get the best out of your AI. Write clear and specific instructions, give as much context as possible, use delimiters to clearly indicate distinct parts of the input, and especially look out for something called hallucinations. Hallucinations are when your AI gives you an output that it thinks is right, but is completely wrong. For example, if I write about writing solidity and variant tests in Foundry, GPT disgraces us by saying we have to npm install it from Open Zeppelin. These can be tough to spot, but once you try it out, you'll see it doesn't work. And finally, you want to understand the limitations of the AI you're working with and iterate constantly. Large learning language models are trained on human conversation, so you can interact with them as if you're having a conversation. But it's important to know the limitations of these AIs, as most AIs have a limit on how many tokens or words they can keep in context at one time. AI is trained off human language, so if you're good at asking other humans questions, you'll probably be good at asking robots questions too. Asking questions is a skill, so keep practicing. I've got a link in the description to learn.deeplearning.ai, which is a free course to help software engineers be better prompt engineers. Now, when the AIs can't help you, you'll have to go back to the old standbys, actually doing work yourself. And one of the first pieces of work is reading the documentation. You probably should have done this already. However, we can still use ChatGPT because a strategy that I constantly use is I'll copy paste sections of the documentation at ChatGPT as context and say something like the above are the docs for tool X based on those docs, how do I do Y? So Google might be crying because ChatGPT is eating its lunch, but Google still has what AI doesn't have, the entire internet. Previously, anytime I ran into an issue, I prayed someone else had run into it before I made a post on it so I could Google search that exact issue. There's a new tool called Find that combines web search with AI as it does a web search and it crawls through all the data of the sites, reads them all, and then gives you an answer based off of what it reads. Five, ask in a forum. Sometimes the information just isn't out there and we need to ask human beings. We always wanna ask our question on a webbed indexed forum like Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow, Hirana, or Reddit. This way web crawlers and more likely AIs can scrape the data from these sites and learn from us. That way, the next time we have this question, we can get our answers quickly. Asking on Discord and Twitter are because your knowledge will get lost to the unsearchable conversations that Discord is, and web crawlers don't index them. The super secret alpha is to ask a question on Stack Exchange and then post your Stack Exchange link to Discord. You should 100% always ask your questions and format them with Markdown, and if you're not sure how to do Markdown, you can ask ChatGPT to help you format your questions in Markdown. Ask on the support GitHub or forum. Is the tool you're working on open source? Awesome, ask a well-formatted question on their Git page. Not open source? Never use that tool again. This is how we improve our tools, by creating issues, engaging with each other, and even taking on issues and contributing to the open source code. And then finally, iterate. Do all these same steps over again. And as always, keep hopping through the code, and until next time, stay riveting my fellow blockchain ears.